much. Well, uh, we'll keep it kind of informal, but I guess legally I do need to call it to uh, order, uh, which I, I, I am doing right now is calling this to order. Uh, what I would uh, like for us to do is I'm going to turn it over to our uh, manager, and we're going to go page by page through this budget. And uh, let's let's keep it where if you if you've got a question, just throw them out here on the table. We've got uh, all day as far as I'm concerned. So let's really beat this horse. Yeah, you do too. <laughs> Have to be somewhere too. Huh? Have to be somewhere too. What time? Two. I think two. Well, I'll get you out of here at a quarter till. We in order so we Yeah, uh, it'll be out of Bob. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the only one thing I, I, I want to remind y'all, we do have the Region A meeting Tuesday night at the Boiler Room. Uh, for all of you who can, who can attend. Uh, and uh, I believe that's about the only thing I've got for this morning, other than the budget. So uh, uh, let's see. The Transportation Advisory Committee meets at 530, and I think... Or no, it's five o'clock. It's five, and they're region at six. It's six, and uh, you get a good, good dinner out of it, a good chance to meet a bunch of people. So, if y'all can make it, it'd be fine. So, uh, I'm in my workout clothes. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> they come into everything, so it's kind of yeah. Uh, matter manager? All right, let's. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> it's going to start. It's going to start. I thought my face made run down for a minute. Woke me up. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present this to you. Kind of where I'd like to go in the next um, couple hours while we're here, I'd like to start and just take a few minutes to actually read the uh, manager's message that Warren left behind for us. I think by doing this, it will kind of give us an overview of where we're going today by looking at the budget and where we're going in the upcoming fiscal year of some things we do need to address. So if you'll bear with me, I'm just going to go through this with you. The town of Franklin remains in sound financial condition with a stable fund balance and a current ad valorem tax rate of $0.25 cents per $100. The town is experiencing very slow growth in our revenue sources, especially sales tax, interest on investments, and water and sewer revenues. The town should remain diligent in maintaining spending within budgeted amounts and carefully consider un any unanticipated expenditures during the fiscal year. Your debt service. All debt payments are fully budgeted as required by law. The town has completed the sewer plant renovation and the additional debt service for this project is included within the budget. Personnel. This budget calls for a 1% one-time payment base on salary in lieu of a cost of living adjustment for all positions. The budget anticipates the retirement of the current IT director in July, allowing the planner to assume some routine daily duties and contracting other more advanced network services as needed, eliminating one full-time position. The budget also anticipates the retirement of the current Main Street Program Director in August, with those duties being split between a part-time festival and event coordinator and a contractual obligated firm or individual for the Main Street duties. One entry-level staff position will be funded within the current fire department budget with no overall increase in the fire, in the fire budget. Although other departments requested additional personnel, funding was not available without reallocating funds from other areas. Employee benefits will remain unchanged. Operating capital outlay. The police department will, will be replacing one patrol vehicle with over 100,000 miles. Public works will replace a half-ton pickup truck. Special projects. Funds are budgeted for upgrades to the gazebo area at the town square, for a stream restoration project to be completed at Memorial Park, and to complete a job classification and salary study of all town employees. By department, water and sewer. Funds are budgeted for five small water and sewer replacement projects. Funds are budgeted for cleaning the drainage basin at the water plant. Police department, bulletproof vests that are nearing expiration will be replaced. Funds were increased for fuel cost and increased vehicle maintenance. Funds were also allowed, allocated for a canine program. Fire Department. Replacement of uniforms and protective gear. The 10-year strategic plan continues. Water and sewer rates. The Board of Aldermen completed a two-year water and sewer rate increase last fiscal year. Based on current estimates, water and sewer revenues combined are estimated to be approximately 300000 lower than expected this year. 
So changes have been initiated within the water and sewer budget to maintain this fund. A detailed water rate study will be completed by June 2014 and the town should review the study with due diligence anticipating a future water treatment plant expansion as well as funding a current water and sewer infrastructure projects. The conclusion. This budget for 2013-2014 is balanced in accordance with the North Carolina Local Government Budget and Fiscal Control Act and continues to provide existing services while meeting the governing board's priorities and policies. The general fund balance was reduced by $242,000, but a modest tax increase is recommended to adjust the ad valorem tax rate to $0.26 cents per $100 evaluation. This will allow a modest transfer from undesignated funds to be used for balancing the budget while maintaining a healthy and sustainable fiscal future for the town while still accomplishing several projects. The service fee for fire services is recommended to remain at the current funding level of four cents per $100 of valuation. Revenue from the service fee will cover all operating expenses with the only transfer from the fire budget, fire fund balance, utilized for apparatus lease payments. Until the detail rate study is completed and analyzed, it is recommended that sewer and water rates remain unchanged. Although revenues are projected to be approximately 300,000 lower than anticipated, Adjustments have been made within the budget to compensate for the revenue loss with no increase in water and sewer rates this year and a modest transfer from the water and sewer fund balance. That includes the budget or concludes the budget message. What I would like to kind of start with, if you'll notice what I've passed out to each of you at your uh, seats, is I wanted to kind of talk about this proposed tax increase um, <clears throat> to kind of show you what this would do because I think this is something we need to take into consideration for you as we move through the budget process today. If you look on your assessed value, I broke it down, an assessed value of 25,000 that goes from 25,000, 50,000, 75,000, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500,000, and 1 million. If you were to institute a 1% or a penny increase, you take your tax rate from 25 cents to 26 cents per 100 on a 25,000 assess value property, your tax bill for one year would be $65. So the question to note is how is that different from the current year in which we're in? The current year, if you have a piece of property that's valued at $25,000, at the 25 cent per hundred, you pay a tax bill of $62.50. So an increase of one penny, the difference would be you'd be paying $2.50 more a year on your property tax. I did do, I looked at some of the demographics within the town of Franklin. Your average property hits around 50,000 up to around 300,000. So your average taxpayer, if you did institute this penny increase, would see anywhere from a $5 up to around a $30 increase in their tax bill. The most expensive, a million dollar piece of property would only see $100 in addition to their tax bill. So I just kind of wanted to, to bring you guys aware of what a penny would do to someone's property um, and what rate we're talking about when we look at how much it's gonna affect them. The next thing I'd like to look at, and we can come back to this, if you'll flip the page, I also wanted to look at the millage rate over the years. <clears throat> if you will notice, the last time, it, it, this was fascinating to me, in 1969 you were at $1.30. Over the years it fluctuates. The last time the town of Franklin raised property taxes was in 2001. It went from 33 cents in 2000 up to 36 cents in 2001. So you saw a 3% increase. Now from, 2000, from 2001 to 2007, it decreased. From 2007 to present, the town of Franklin is held strong at 25 cents on their tax rate. I thought this would just be kind of a good tool. I'm a visual learner just to kind of give the board an idea of, of what a penny could do for us and where we've been over the years. Um, if I have calculated correctly, if you went up one penny, you're going to generate around 60 and into consideration and 95% collection rate. Any questions? We can start. I'd like to entertain any questions that the board may have about the tax. Thoughts, feelings? 
Uh, I have one <coughs> one thing that uh, I'm going to mention after we uh, go through the budget. Okay. Or All right. And, uh, uh, and, and, and it, it, it involves the, the tax rate. Anything else? Anybody? I think it's very Somebody. easy. Somebody's got to have some questions. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we're, we're going to. <laughs> well, about this. Oh. So we're not wanting to do it now. We're wanting to do it. Oh, well, I've already asked it, but I figured everybody else is going to do it. Yeah, the, the game plan is sort of to go through the uh, budget page by page uh, and rather than just saying here it is. And let's so go I just said about the tax increase. Mm -hmm. Anybody had feelings about the tax increase? Yeah, I, I, I think that that's something that we'll just let's go through the budget and then let's talk about the tax increase because I think we can justify uh, more than justify actually. So, uh, All right. Well, I wanted to start okay. there. Um, and then if you guys want to just get out the large package of the budget, we'll kind of go page by page. I thought this would be a good starting point. Um, I can just kind of give you guys a little bit detailed overview of where we're going this upcoming year. Of course, after the message, that is your budget ordinance, which is required by law. Now, <clears throat> Exhibit A, Town of Franklin budget for a year ending in June, would be for June 30th, 2015. Um, what you're basically looking at, the total anticipated revenue for your general fund, and Jen, please correct me if I misspeak on anything um, as far as this. Looks like your total anticipated revenue is $3,153,500. Um, for your fire department fund, you're looking at around $500,000. Your enterprise fund, $3,373,000, which gives you a total of $7,000,000. $26,500. And then you can break it down. Your fund balance appropriated for general fund, $620,000. Fund balance appropriated for the fire department fund, $180,500. Fund balance appropriate, the total would be $800,500. Your retained earnings that were appropriated, you've got $206,500 in your enterprise fund. So a total budget for the general fund is $3,773,500. Total budget for your fire department fund is $680,500. Your total budget for your enterprise fund is $3,579,500 for a total of $8,033,500. Any questions on this page? Okay. Let's say we have a magnificent year and tourism goes up and property starts selling and revenues start coming in. Does that just go into the, where, where would the additional revenue go in? Just to retain? Well, that would go in your general credit. Well, well you've got to get ahead of 170000 before you want to even break even. So you're taking 170000 to balance your budget. So unless yeah. you get over that, so you, you're, you're not so that breaking even. So that would go to repay that and then Say unless you unless your revenues become unless you get 170 thousand more revenues than expenses, you're not even broke even yet. Yeah. Because okay. you're not really supposed to take your fund balance to balance. Yeah. That's a big no no. Okay. <coughs> Anything else on this page? Did that explain what's wrong, no Barbara? Yes. Thanks. Okay. All right. Moving on. Okay. General fund, detail budgets of revenues, and your sources. Okay, if you'll notice under the Hadzler and Taxes, you will see the current year, which is budgeted $1,663,500. <coughs> that is an increase from last year, and that is with the assumption of the one penny increase. Um, another thing to note under other taxes, your privilege licenses is down by $65,000. One factor into this is the video gaming uh, devices. Those, as we know, the state that's kind of in limbo. One minute we have them, one minute we don't. So that that's fluctuated this year. What revenue was anticipated, but yet came did not come through. Another thing to note on certainly huh? the privilege license may be completely gone because the state is trying to pass a law now that either to do away with it completely or limit it to a flat fee. In, in really big cities, that would cost millions of dollars. So I'm not sure if it's going to get passed or not, but one of the proposals is to do like $100 for each business, which ours probably would be 
you know, probably be about the same because we do about 400, I think it's about 400 vendors or whatever you want to call businesses. So we might come out okay, but if they do away with it completely, then you'd be losing that revenue. I, I know that I was really upset about that too until the manager explained to me that a small town will actually come out ahead if the legislature goes with the flat one hundred dollars. Right. But then you're gonna have all the compliance because see some people's been paying well, twenty five a year and then that's, and then you're gonna have people like Walmart paying a hundred and like your trunk. Oh, yeah. And we've also got businesses that are paying two dollars and a half. Right. Which doesn't even account for the but you know what saying that you right. printed on for your stamp. We can't even afford to send them the tax bill at two dollars and a half. But see what's gonna to happen too when you go to that flat fee. Which I'm not saying they won't pay it, but somebody like a Walmart, a Milo, oh, yeah. big stores will be paying the same as a and I know $100. I mean, it's not going to break anybody, but that's the proposal. I'm not sure if it was. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't go through. Uh, because somehow he's got the idea that that's fair. Yeah. The big places like Charlotte and stuff, they show on those tables that that lose. And, and they really would. lose lots of money. The, the way I've looked at that is you do take your larger cities like Charlotte who they rely on your bigger box, your bigger industries, who are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. Where in our case, the smaller community, I almost see us benefiting from this. Um, it, it is a double-edged sword because your mom and pops would pay more. But in this particular case, it's, you know, you do have your average Florida Ridge license, 25 to 50 bucks. You have some people who are still paying $2.50. We are not at a place where we rely heavily on your larger industries because we, we have your Walmart, your Lowe's, your Bilo, your Ingalls, where Charlotte probably has 50 more of those. Where in my personal opinion, I think you it, we would come out ahead if this did happen because you're going to see what we rely on. You're, you're going to get more. But another thing you might point out, all these, you're talking about that two and a half fee, that's been set by the state. The towns. When you do a privilege license, a lot of these fees, you have no choice but to charge the 250 That's state regulated. Right, that means Even that if you want to charge more. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. The state's got control of a lot of these licenses. Oh, yes. Yeah. So but that's reason some of them are so low. That's why we'll have to just wait and see. And then a lot of things are exempt. Yeah. But they were talking about this as a cap. So if our rates were not up there, you know, you'd have to raise the rates in order to get them up there. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to change your ordinance. If you wanted to do that. Yes. Well, let's think about it. We'll send a letter to Jim Davis how we feel about it. After we analyze it a little more. I know how the league feels about it. Um, also, one other thing to note, under your unrestricted intergovern intergovernmental revenues, your telecommunications sales tax, there it's down by 20000 this year. Um, do, you, Jen, do you know any explanation for that? It's based on what the state formula is. And, you know, it's, what they do is collect this tax and then divide it out to us. And it's just like sales tax is not increased. At one time, sales tax increased every year. But, you know, the economy's down, especially in this area. That the economy really affects these type of revenues. And I mean, I don't really know why it's down, but it looks like it's going to be down for the past year, so that's one reason we decreased it. What goes in the franchise tax? It's like more electrical and stuff. Okay, fine. It's like your powers. All right, go ahead. But there are a lot of, there are a lot of people in the telecommunication field, you know, that are dropping their own phones. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah, you're right. right. The, the phones, phones would affect it, mm -hmm. yes. Because this is like for the phone companies and stuff. You're right. That's probably part of the decrease. Um, and then your restricted intergovernmental revenue, your power bill at 120000 the same as last year. Tourism Development Authority, 100000 the same as last year. And we'll, the further we get into this budget, it'll break it down a little bit further. Okay, on Schedule 1, page 2, um, we are hopefully anticipating a slight increase in your zoning permits from the previous year. twenty, The current year that we're in, 2013-2014, we budgeted 2500 This year we're anticipating a slight increase and we're doing around $4,000. Um, other sources, the only slight, the administration re from the previous year of 250000 down to 105000 
And then the total anticipated revenue, your fund balance appropriated for 2014-2015 is predicted to be 170000 from the previous year of 177000 Then a fund balance appropriated your power bill, power bill for 2014-2015 is 450000 compared to last year or this current year, 2013-2014, which is 550000 Any questions on that page? <coughs> All right. The fun part, the detailed part. Okay. General government, governing board. One thing to notice in there that I wanted to point out, your nonprofit organizations, that is what the town has done in the past where we do our, our funding pool. You have the same amount budgeted that you did last year for 40000 That's when we open it up in July and they can come and fill out a funding out a grant request and then that will come before the town board probably at your uh, September meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's the same as last year. Another thing to note is your economic development. The 7000 that is in 2013 when the town partnered with the county for Franklin Tubular. That is your predicted payment for this year. It's your 7000 your Franklin Area Chamber of Commerce, 4000 There's 2000 for your fireworks and 2000 for your membership dues. And then picking on the square is the same as last year as well. You're at 28500 And then the professional services, the 31500 that's the audit, correct, Janet? Yes, but I think it's $4,000 for fireworks. You see, now, I don't know, because I think it's... I think the fees is another thing. I think the dues and description, I think it's $4,000 hard work. Okay. I'm pretty sure. The uh, picking on the square, do we get any revenues from the vendors, the people that make money off the... You do. They have to, they come in once a year with our tax collector who also does our privilege license and they're assigned a vendor application. And there is a fee for that. I still think about well, okay, the donations. <laughs> well, I, I had a question. Yes. And when I said with her, I had a question too. Is I know it's there's a lot of people that go to it during the year. A lot of it's uh, tourists that go into it. I don't know of a lot of locals that go to pick it on the square. But my concern was, uh, what's the benefit of it? Because uh, I hear a lot of our our downtown merchants aren't getting any benefit. They don't, when they have tried to stay open, they're not getting anyone coming in. So I guess my biggest question was, what is the main benefit for picking on the square? And do we know whether it is helping bring more tourism to help businesses and all that? I can answer the theory anyway, is that <laughs> people come to some fun event in town and walk around and look in the windows and they like, they enjoy it, so they'll come back to the town and shop later. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the theory behind any of the festivals, is just to associate Franklin as a fun, exciting place in people's minds, so they'll come back. So you may not have a benefit that day or that night, but you would have I it. think originally too far, but so many people would say they, they came to Franklin at 8 o'clock, everything was shut down. And they're here, and they had to just go to their hotel room. Yeah, you know, as I'm saying, they had, you know, it's like, okay, I get to see a little of what goes on in the little small towns. Mm -hmm. You know, like you say, Bob, big benefit, but I think some people come, I've heard people leave and say, oh, that was so cute. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm just like, Patty, I've heard the other one say, okay, well, let me do seems, something different. Um, yeah. Kind of generational too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, I mean, down the road, it would, I, to me, it would be good to look at other ways of bringing different demographics, different generations, different and mix of music. Yeah, that's different yeah, mix of absolutely. music. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, something that's going to touch on everyone and everyone. not just um, a certain group. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, let me, let me uh, step on a sacred cow here. Just a second. <laughs> Oops, you've never done that before, Bob. Uh, well, at my age, what difference does it matter? But. <coughs> I'm a little concerned. Out of the four thousand we give to the Chamber of Commerce, two thousand of that goes to a fireworks show. We, we think. We think. Yeah. We think. Mm -hmm. Janet said she thought it was four thousand. Mm -hmm. Janet said she thought it was four thousand goes to fireworks. Uh, to me, 
when we've got nonprofits and all that are hurting like that, it looks to me like the fireworks. The fireworks really, if you're not right there at the park, you can't even see. Uh, Have you ever go? The amount of people who come from out of town. I know. I know. Huge. I know. There is a boat. Everybody looks for. Fireworks. Right. But what I'm getting at is I would think that the chamber could fund that from private funds. I think they've tried. You can ever watch even people not, they mm -hmm. dive right by and don't even leave donations but at the I wonder, I, I'm sure the 4,000 is the total. Oh, no, I, this bill. I think oh, the no, county no, gives. In the team. Yeah, oh, yeah. The yeah. county yeah. gives yeah. as well. And yeah. TDC, everybody mm -hmm. gives, I think. Well, anyhow, uh, for 30 minutes show. Uh, I just wanted to mention. Of course, it's the Fourth of July, Bob. I, I know it's the Fourth of July. <laughs> I am the biggest rah rah for it. Bob. So <laughs> like just the grand finale of everything. I'm there, the I'm there at five o'clock and don't leave until yeah. it's over. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I watch it from my window. Oh, well, <laughs> you can be one of the private donors. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a big I know five dollars. I got five dollars. Yeah. A lot of people who book goes motel rooms. Yeah, those in, motel rooms. In advance, mm -hmm. right there. Uh, it really, really helps a lot. Those restaurants are all through there. Everything's down. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of them are coming to all of the 4th of July things besides the fireworks. So, so oh, yeah. The fireworks yeah. just kind the of Lions grand club now yeah. to get them there for everybody else. And that Lions Club makes good money. Oh, yeah. For their barbecue. Yeah. Before. Okay. Any other things on this page? That's all I have on that. All right. Moving on. Um, your administration. One thing that you will note that's different than the previous year is your pay plan implementation. And this was hit on briefly in the uh, budget message. One thing that Warren and I have discussed uh, since I assumed the responsibilities of the human resource officer was looking at the league and certain avenues that they would offer to come in here and do a proper pay scale, a pay study, and a pay implementation process for the town of Franklin. Uh, what would happen from where I've reached out with is we would, you would contract with the league and then the league then in turn contracts through a group called MAPS. MAPS would come in here for 90 days if everything went smoothly, it may be a little bit longer and do a thorough uh, pay study and pay implementation schedule. I think it's way past it. Anything? So we need it to sure. come after what happened. You know, if you let it go too long, then it ends up being a major issue. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, moving on then. Uh, next is the finance. Um, that is basically a mirror image as last year. Um, your group insurance, which with all the things, all of the departments in the budget did slightly increase. Um, any questions on this one? Okay. All right. Schedule two, page four, this is billing and collections. It was actually uh, decreased slightly this year. We we're able to cut back in um, your training. Any questions on this one? Okay. I know, I like that. I mean, we're going to make some progress. Wait, let's just wait, though. Wait, the meat's yeah, coming. Wait, yeah. It's coming. <laughs> okay. Schedule 2, page 5. This is your legal and elections. This is the town attorney. We were able to decrease this by 10,000 um, just by really kind of being cautious and making sure it was an absolute necessity before an employee picked up the phone to call the attorney. Um, so we were able to decrease that by 10,000. Of course, you'll notice Macon County, we had to have the 5,000 last year. That was because for them to do our elections. So we did not have to have this this year since this is not election for the town of Franklin. Uh, anything on this one? Okay. All right, Schedule 2, page 6, your facilities. One thing to note on this one, under your insurance and bond, it did increase from last year. And this, what is housed in this line item, is this is your property uh, insurance. And we did see an increase from that. Okay. Anything on this page? All right. Okay, Schedule 2, schedule two page 7. Uh, this is your IT. 
As I noted, the current IT director is looking to retire July the 1st of 2014. There is money set aside under other services at the will of the board throughout the year if they would like to contract this back. Um, the current IT director has expressed an interest in possibly contracting that back. So if it is the will of the board in the upcoming months, if you do approve this budget, there's money in there to do that. Anything else on this one? Good. All right. Schedule 2, page 8, Planning and Economic Development. Um, one thing to note is there is, there's a couple, you've got your planning board, your board of adjustment, and your town planner that's figured into your salary and wages. This is where your planning board and board of adjustment are in at as well. You will see an increase in the training from the previous year because part of the requirement for the land use administrator, your town planner, is for them to obtain a CZO, a Certified Zoning Official Certificate. So it was budgeted for that individual to attend that this year. Any questions on this one? Okay. Big increase in group insurance? Yes. Single to family. Mm -hmm. I was, I was amazed at how much they pay in group insurance. That's one of the questions I brought up to Summer when I met with her was on insurance. Do we just go with the same insurance company every year or are we getting bidding it out and getting other quotes from various ones, whether it be local? Um, I'm big to put on and on if we can keep it local mm -hmm. and do so. Um, and my understanding is we go directly through Blue Cross. Yes. So that we don't great. go through any um, of our local vendors. Um, I have worked with local insurance companies in the past, and it's always been nice to just be able to pick up the phone. They come in and meet with you and your employees every year. So I didn't know if that was something that we've looked at in the past. You know, I mean, so I don't know where we're going on that. Um, we have always, and Janet, you may want to speak on this as well, we always, uh, we have used directly through Blue Cross Blue Shield, but something her and I have discussed, as you did see, there is a significant increase in your family coverage. This is something that her and I have agreed to look at this upcoming, for the next budget year, to see what other avenues are out there for us, because that is a rather steep increase. Does the league offer any kind of... Uh, the league, I think, actually is higher than Blue Cross. So yeah. we're a small group, so you get into the small group, and then, um, and we have tried to beat it out in the past, and usually when we do, Blue Cross, and I'm not, it was usually cheaper, and at one time, the league didn't have a network out here in this area. The league, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, the league is the league insurance that we have workers comp through, but they offer health insurance, but now, one time, and it's been a few years back, it was actually higher. And it wasn't as good of benefits, but um, we have a representative that I can email and talk to. And last year, and I don't know, I don't, you and Patty that probably don't know, but we did a healthy thing, and all the employees participated, and we actually got a discount this year. It went up about ten percent, which according to the clerk's net, some people went up about thirty-three percent to thirty-five. So but the reason for part of this is Obamacare. See, all these new regulations is coming down, and you have to understand is there's all these fees that's hidden now. And I'm not I'm not saying right or wrong, but because I've been to several meetings with the league, you know, they have these meetings, and they've talked about how hard it is to keep the cost down. They're with med cost now. But at one time, and I've not seen the rates, well, I think they went up this year. I'm pretty sure they did, too. And then they had something out I read that some groups they didn't go up as much, but I think they always look at your experience. But we're planning to do this wellness again. Yeah. And I Absolutely. think the wellness, I wasn't really a big opponent of it, but actually it's really nice because you can get on the computer and look at it and it'll tell you some areas. And we had a lot of, I think a lot of people were really interested. So we're going to do a wellness thing. Get your flu shots. You can, we had like classes. Somebody was asking me the other day, did we still go to close to the sponsorship of the Yes. Yeah. Yes, we still have one. 
oh, like Joy's is bringing up, we pay $100 membership and then anybody wants to join, it saves them. What is it that the fee you have to pay? If you they wait the, 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 the membership to be $150. And I think we have a few people that goes over there. Yeah, I see some. Mm -hmm. Employee, we pay 100% of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. If, are we still paying 100% family? Or did, no, did they we're paying up this, some They have to like, contribute some. And then it went up this year, and then Warren said he just hated because since nobody's getting a raise, he yeah. had to make okay. them pay the difference. But we probably do need to look at it in the we future, will. maybe to quit supplementing families. Because my understanding is, too, that you have to offer health insurance to your employee and children. But with Obamacare, and I'm not sure how this is going to work, Spouses, they can get that through there. I mean, that may be something we have to look at because everywhere you go to all these meetings, a lot of places is really looking at insurance. Insurance is very high for everybody, and in fact, they try to if you smoke, they're supposed to make you pay more and that kind of stuff. But really, I don't think that many employees at the town smoke, so I'm not sure that saves us much. But you, you know, you sort of penalize them for their bad habits, I guess. Yeah. yeah so. Anybody have any more anything questions? Anything else? Okay. All right. Uh, schedule 2, page 9. Uh, this is your Tourism Development Authority, and this is basically just a wash. Um, they're anticipating uh, 100,000. We're anticipating 100,000 this year. You just funnel it right back out the door. <laughs> um, anything on this one? Okay. Uh, schedule 2, page 10, uh, the Main Street. Wanted to bring a look, couple points that uh, we discussed in our budget message was if you'll notice, currently under salary and wages, um, we are anticipating the upcoming retirement of our Main Street director. She has expressed an interest of uh, wanting to be part time, which you would consider that to be someone who just focused on your festivals and events, so she'd be a festivals and events coordinator. She would have to work less than a thousand hours per calendar year to be considered part time as well. Now the second equation to that is you're under other services. There is 18,500 set aside, if you'll notice there's a grand total of 22,000 to contract out with an individual or organization to do the Main Street portion of that. Also one other thing to note in that 22,000, we are in desperate need of storage. So there's $3,500 um, from that 22,000 to do storage units. Um, as you know, come July 1st, we will be moving out of, before then, we'll be completely out of the old town hall. So we've got to have somewhere to put some of the decorations and other equipment that we have in there. Any questions on this one? Okay. All right. Schedule two, page 11. This is your traffic and event services. Again, this is a part-time position. Um, the only, there was a slight increase just from last year, the $500 for the unemployment insurance. Anything? You have to pay zero percent. Now we got to pay one percent. All right. Schedule two, page 12, non-departmental. This is your separation pay for the, for the retired police officers. You currently have three that fall within this category. Any questions on this one? There's no choice about that. No, without no, this one, no. There's, there's no choice. That's <laughs> all. Okay. They, they deserve it. Sure. Schedule 2, page 13. I wanted to kind of talk, um, again, hone in some points that were brought up earlier. Uh, one thing to note is under your capital outlay equipment, uh, the police chief had actually requested three cars. There was only enough money in the budget for one. However, after speaking with the police chief, I do feel that there is a need for a second vehicle. So one, there's two options you really have at this point if the board is willing to go for the second vehicle. You could either look at funding in full a second vehicle or maybe the potential of looking at a lease purchase where you would use your 36000 as your lease purchase payment for maybe two vehicles. So that's something we, we do need to kind of talk about and see where you want to go with that if the board is interested and in moving forward to get that second vehicle for this department. We, we plan on surplus and a vehicle? 
I do. The two, the, the one that is calculated in this budget is a 2005, and I've got some information on it, it's a Ford Explorer that has, it's 2005 Ford Explorer with 137,892 miles on it. If you figure in the 1.5 multiplier for the idle time, you're really looking at a vehicle that probably has around 206,800, or excuse me, 206,838 miles on it. Um, this vehicle has given several problems in the past year, uh, transmission, engine problems. Um, so this is the one that you actually see for the 36,000 in the budget. The second vehicle that they're looking at that they would like to surplus is the 2006 Ford Crown Victoria. It has 114,569 miles. Again, if you calculate the 1.5 multiplier in there for your idle time, you have a vehicle that roughly has around 171,853 miles. If we surplus that, could we put it somewhere on Harrison Avenue with slow traffic down? <laughs> you see the sign up here? He's going to move it around. David's moving that sign all over town. That slowed a lot of traffic down really on Main Street. Just watch people getting the brakes. Yeah. Well, you, you would think that we replace two of those vehicles, our vehicle maintenance, we would have some money in that vehicle maintenance. So that vehicle maintenance is the high because we've got some many vehicles. I mean, you don't buy transmissions easy for 3500 right. piece, plus the maintenance on something. So. I think you see in the paper that, that we were chasing somebody in a the car stalled and they not that. I mean, yeah. Well, a lot of those vehicles should be still under warranty. The newer ones. Oh, yeah, the, the newer, newer ones, absolutely. And uh, supposed to be uh, more fuel efficient, so <coughs> I kind of question. If we replace two of them, the, the t extra ten thousand dollars that was budgeted for vehicle maintenance. I thought most of those were gas. Did it? Yeah, that's gas. Yeah. That's, that's your Just gas. Just think of gas. Oil changes and stuff. I feel like that's not what just been. major repairs. It's more like routine maintenance. It's not like major. And they have probably about twenty vehicles. So when you look at it that way, there's probably not. And of the 20, from what I discussed with the police chief, we've got about eight new vehicles currently. With the count of two new ones. And there's no new positions in the special. Yes. Sir. <coughs> but I think most of the ones that's not being used has already been sold off. Mm -hmm. So we did that about a year or two ago. All the vehicles have just sat around. Yeah, but the ones we replaced these with. Yeah, they've been too. Yeah. 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 Usually they just get maybe, I was kind of thinking, yeah, maybe a thousand or two at most. Okay, so you're talking about maybe four at most. Is there any negative to a lease purchase? Is there any what? Negative to a lease purchase? Just working through the deep requirements. Mm -hmm. The lender, they have to deal with the lender. <laughs> well, we started in one lease purchase on our last ones that ended up having to buy all these mm -hmm. issues. The mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, the two proposals well, in this one, at this point. <laughs> the two proposals in this is for a new Ford Explorer to replace the Ford Explorer, and then if you did want to go the second vehicle, it would be a uh, Ford Taurus. We used to could go through the Ford lease and do it pretty easily, but now I'm not sure if that changed your policy or not. That's been several years ago. Mm -hmm. Something we just have to look into, I guess. So if I was right when we tried to buy those Chevrolet and lease purchase, nobody would give us a lease. But now we used to go through Ford lease in Lake Michigan, and you just fill out two or three paperwork, you know what I'm saying? And then they would do it like three to four years for you. Mm -hmm. Well, at this, at this point, if we're thinking about that, I'd like for someone to be able to go out and, and check. I mean, that's the only thing we can do at this point. It may be available for you to well. Uh, right. And I think we need. If we, get, if we can get the lease, yeah. then the money we've got budgeted to cover our lease budget. Yeah, we're both. Yeah. So do we do that now or we do that at the end of the meeting? Give her permission to go out there and look? No, I'll do it now. No, I'll do it now. Do it now. One of the things, done. You know, do it. Done. One of the things we may want to look at is just the cost of the police cars the tip of the iceberg. The computers, lights, sirens, radios and all. Uh, there are a couple of companies that will 
sell you a car completely outfitted to did, did David mention that? Uh, no, he didn't. He had actually broken it down okay. with the proposal that he'd gotten from Ford. It would be a separate package. Gotcha. But I think that 36000 is more than It is. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's why it looks like the car costs so much. The car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the equipment is outright. So that's the that's equipment. The police package. New or old. Mm -hmm. Is the equipment new or old? Is the equipment the same age as the equipment? Your lights and all can't be transferred because they keep changing every year. Uh, your radios probably can. All your mounts in there are for the vehicle, so they've got to be designed for that. Right. Yeah. There's no easy way out. Right. <laughs> so, I'm like a fire truck. Yeah. So, what I'll do is I'll move forward and see if we can obtain a lease purchase for two vehicles. The other thing I wanted to note in here that was also mentioned in the budget message was um, under your supplies, there's $29,000. And in that, there is 30, uh, right at 3800 set aside for a canine. Um, this is something the board should consider. You know, to me, you really have one of two options. You can, you know, 3800 30, isn't going to get you too far with a canine. Um, you could scrap the idea of the canine altogether. Um, however, if there is, feels like there is a need for a canine unit, my recommendation would be that you looked maybe at a, a puppy. And when I say puppy, you know, a, a, a dog that's six to seven weeks old that we could actually put through the proper training requirements. Um, so just kind of direct me how you would like to go there. You can either eliminate that and put that money back. They could use that for supplies for radios, tasers, or we can pursue the canine unit. I'd actually like to actually pursue the K9 unit and that money would get us would get us started with right. and, and but it wouldn't be ready, you know, through this budget year. That's just I just it's going to take time but we're not spend that much this year on it, but the next year we get it certified and, and the train to get us with the officer and stuff. Mm -hmm. This is K9 like This is drug. Yeah, we certainly had that yeah. problem in town and yeah. you and I think send a message to the right, citizens we're serious. Of town that we're being a proactive on drugs in the area. And we do, our officers do use, do have a lot of the idle time that is sit waiting to get a canine unit. So in other words, once they stop someone, they're, they're not available to answer any other call. So that car is sitting there running and they're not available for calls. So, that's what so the county, the county comes yeah. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What that actual cost is to us, or has been in the past, of the idle time? Is there some, some way to get a figure on how much that actually costs in terms of idle time? Yeah. I'm kind of lukewarm about this canine. Um, County's got four of them, and we're paying county taxes. And, and uh, I guess the, the one thing that I, that I will say is, if the board decides that they, that they really want to go through with that, I'm, I'm going to ask that we do what Summer suggests. The dog that they have available now is like five years old. Mm -hmm. um, we don't. We don't need to start there. A uh, five-year-old big dog isn't going to be around long. Yeah, that's and uh, it wouldn't happen a year. Once the train wouldn't happen about a year. A year, year so, yeah. Yeah. So, so if we're going to do it, we need to. We need to get a pup. But also, the board needs to consider that if you have a handler, then that handler has to be paid for taking care of the dog, which does not mean working at the police department. But he's he's paid under regulations half hour or an hour every day because he's, he's looking after the dog. So that has nothing to do with work time as far as the police department is concerned. Um, so there's, there's a lot of... The shifts that they work now, he couldn't work a shift like they were right? because he'd have to come in 30 minutes later and leave 30 minutes sooner. Uh, so you've got all these different things, and so there's a lot of cost that's going to be involved with this. that's going to be hidden. Uh, that you're, I mean, it, it eventually come out, but but until you get right in the middle of it, you're really not going to know 100 percent of what you're looking at. So anyway, I'm just kind of a little pessimistic about this. Yeah, well, I've I've had to deal with this before too, and there's a couple of other things I'd like to throw out. We're going to have to build the kennel. They have to have a concrete run. 
uh, and the dogs that I had, you can't go down to Ingle, I mean, that I dealt with, you can't go down to Ingles and get gravy from them. It has to be special blend. You, you can get it. Yeah, you can't miss it. It's, it's, it's expensive as all different. Why do they have to have something other than what my dog would have? Well, I mean, you, you've got to do that. You've got to have the training. Oh, training. Yeah. You've got the vet bills. They have to go to a vet on a regular schedule. They have to maintain a body weight. Yeah. There's all kinds of <coughs> it's a It's a great PR yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, you, you load the load the pup up, take the pup, they frankle, the kids love it, and they all get them on the and everybody just thinks it's wonderful. I love that part of it. It's great. Yeah. But for the actual, yeah, the cost how concept. much? How much is it going to save us? I don't. I really well, don't show it, that. Kind of like Barrel touched on earlier. Does it send a message though? Also, yes, yes. but I'm, that's all. Yeah. From, you know, we're really happy. Now it's really getting, We're not going to have to sit and wait for the county to get here. We have our own dog. Yeah, but well, like, how if our house is on vacation? Or something. And yeah. You can't. You can't leave that dog with somebody else mm -hmm. while you're out of town. Well, because that was going to be my other question: Is mm -hmm. one going to be sufficient? Well, you have to be one the other thing, the dog will only work for once, right. whatever the handler is. And if the handler work a, a, a ten hour or eight hour shift or whatever he works and he goes home, then you can't afford to pull him back in at two o'clock in the morning to do it again. And there is a yeah. Right. And there you go. That, like, you yeah, have you still have the right backup of calling the sheriff's department, but right. at least the the city would have one. Uh, I think it sends a wonderful message. I you know, I, I listen to it. I listen to it 24 hours. You don't, you don't realize how much time uh, that they're involved in, in uh, with uh, calling for canines. I think another expense would be insurance. Yeah, I think it has to be sworn in as an officer yeah. once it's tried. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> you also have a misperception of what the drug, drug dogs can do, too. The public has a misperception about it. There are a lot of Fourth Amendment issues that have come up in the last couple of years about the use of, of, of sniffs, dog sniffs, where you can use them, where you can't use them. I, 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 I'm just not sure that there is a great benefit to a drug dog. Not when you've got others that you can, you can call on, but of course it would be the pleasure of the board. No. But we're not talking about a tremendous amount of money in this budget. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think probably we need to leave it where it's at, right? Uh, and then, and then that's kind of. But I wouldn't suggest though that we look to the option of a, of a pup yeah, if we're going to go that direction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think that ought to be stipulated that you know, we leave it in there and it's stipulated that we're going to look at uh, spend more time looking at what it would uh, cost us to get a puppy, you know, what is the availability, and then get a better projection. Right. Of the cost of the cost. No, I don't know. You've got to And that's any other questions on this particular budget? Okay. All right. Schedule 2, page 14. Um, this is your uh, streets and maintenance. Um, two things to note in this is under your capital outlay improvements, you have 50000 budgeted um, for the gazebo again this year. Um, you also have um, under Memorial Park, if you guys will remember from probably our March uh, board meeting, there was LTLT had approached us with possibly doing a matching grant to do some restoration work on Crawford Branch down there. So that is why you see that increase from the 2013 2014. <coughs> Anything on this one? Okay. All right. Schedule 2, page 15, this is your towel bill. Uh, basically, everything is a mirror image of last year with the exception of capital outlay improvements, which 2013-2014 uh, was at 370000 2014-2015, we're predicting 270000 Questions on this one? Schedule 2, page 16. This is your general fund debt service, um, your lease purchase principal, and your lease purchase interest. Um, the total for those, for your total debt service, is 163000 for this proposed budget year. Uh, and Janet, please correct me if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, what you have in those is at your current town hall building. Uh, that is your police, yes, your police department. 
the principal and interest repayment. Contingency, same as last year, you have 30000 this year. Any questions on that? All right. Schedule 3, page 1, your uh, fire department fund, your revenues, your fire tax, the same as the 2013-2014 uh, at 500000 Your fund balance was decreased, um, 5000 It was 185500 last year. It is down this year to 180500 Five thousand of that went to release purchase of the fire truck. All right. Any questions on that one? Okay. All right. Schedule three, page two. Um, <clears throat> to make a couple notes, one thing that was requested in the budget message as well was the uh, figure. If you'll notice on your salary and wages, it has increased from the previous year. Is the anticipation of a full-time uh, firefighter. This would give you a total of. You currently have. Let's see. Here. Three, four. You currently have four, uh, three of which are currently on an 18-hour shift. Uh, one who is there basically on a regular schedule from an 8 to 5. This would allow you for an additional member and to increase that to a 24-hour shift. Another thing that you'll notice with anticipation that you would get a, an additional member, your fireman fees should decrease. Your fireman fees are what they're paid per call. Um, it would be at, it was at seventy seven thousand last year with anticipation of a new position there you should decrease so that should decrease to around fifty thousand under other services this was referenced um, in the message also on the previous page where the five thousand was taken um, your other services is your lease payment on the fire truck at one hundred and seventy seven thousand any questions on this one okay all right. Uh, schedule 4, page 1, you'll notice your utility fees. Um, we're predicting, again, uh, less revenue for there just because there's a lot. It's not happening right now. Um, it's at 2300000 uh, dollars One thing to note as well, that was some of the requests in your expenditures. Uh, one was a vehicle. There is for the half-ton pickup truck under your capital outlay equipment. There is 35000 for your truck. One thing to note that the department head and I spoke about was they had requested a full-time position. Currently in this budget that's before you, there's just a budgeted part-time position. There is a current part-time employee who is a part-time heavy equipment operator. Um, the, public, the department had the public works director had expressed a need to take that part-time position and make it a full-time position. One way to justify that in my suggestion for the board to consider, if you'll note under your capital outlay distribution lines, you're at 175000 What you could potentially do if it's the will of the board to make that a full-time position you could take around 20, 20 to 25,000 from that and place that in your salary and wages. That would alleviate, that would take you down to 150 to 155. And what you would need to do, the stipulations that I would put on that is that is going to allow you, if you did use your full time person, that should allow them to start doing some smaller projects in house without contracting those out to multiple agencies. Uh, so that is one thing to consider. Mount Ed will have to have increases in retirement 401k and group insurance because that would just be the salary part. Because if you had a full time employee, you got to pay all those increases. And a part time one gets that. But there's so many projects that are around town mm -hmm. that rather than us having to go out there and get somebody else, keep it in town and keep busy. I think that's a good idea. And usually when we go out, we end up paying more than what we anticipated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of uh, if we do this and have them let the summer have more control on the specific projects we want to get accomplished. Right. And hang it on. Absolutely. And hang it on. Priority. And I don't have any problem in doing this as long as we're able to control some of this. Yeah. It's a make sure some of these projects get accomplished. That's some of them have been sitting up home. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
2013-2014, they were $935,000. 2014-2015, you're down to around $927,500. Your expenditures, which is your lease purchase interest, is at $927,500. And again, Jan, if you were correct me if I'm speaking correctly, um, to my knowledge, those expenditures are what we're paying for our sewer plant. And I believe you do have your, we're paying some still on our water plant. such a low tax rate that we have deferred things and deferred things to the point that I'm a little concerned right now about economic development of the town. 
we're seeing more and more empty buildings, and one of the problems we're seeing in these empty buildings, we're beginning to look depressed. We really are. I've just been looking here. Uh, somebody's got a million dollars worth of property. It's only going to pay 200 extra in taxes. That's less than $20 a month. I really think that we ought to look at the two cents so that we're not so far behind and that we're keeping our basic services up to a level that's going to be attractive <coughs> for economic development. And I, I, I really don't have a vote on this, but I would like for the board to seriously consider the benefits of the economic development. Most, most people looking at a town are not looking at so much at the tax rate as they are the water, the sewer, the recreation, the livability of a town. And so I'm just putting it out uh, to see if, if, if there's any kind of consensus or if I'm way off base or what, but to consider the two cent increase rather than the one cent. Would you advise that this entire 64000 extra that would give us would be put into things like uh, Wherever they would be most needed, that. this board would would decide where the priorities are. And uh, it would, if, if my calculations, Madam Manager, are correct, I think we'd only be bringing in an extra hundred twenty thousand dollars total. Mm -hmm. And in the scheme of things, that's not a whole <laughs> lot. But by golly, it is a start. And we don't know what's going to happen with the property revaluation next year. So it may be that we want to make our move right now and build a cushion. Well, we know we're going to have to change the rate next year. That's right. It's but, got, it has to be changed. But, but I'm not sure, Farrell, that we but that we, we don't have. It's going to affect the seat. Uh, the county is already pre predicting on what their tax, their millage rate is going to go up to. Uh, if it's at like highest reevaluations. You don't lose as much usually on property in the city as you do out in the rural areas. So it may not affect us as well, much. Well, that's a 25% decrease at the yeah. total valuation yeah. from the town? 27 to 35 cents on the average, 35, 35 minutes. Well, let me point out something to you about that. If the property in, out in the county decreases by 25%, the property inside the city limits, uh, you know, it is some point less than that, and I predict it will be. When they figure the overall tax rate for the county, it's going to be figured on that average of, of the 25% drop, and that's going to cause the people in town to pay a lot more tax because it, you already see the predicted rate would be 35 cents at least, you know. So if your property value stayed about the same, you're going to be paying the difference in between 27 cents and 35. Mm -hmm. Well, we can always lower, lower the rates. rates. We're going to get a shock. You always what? Lower the rate if we have to. In town. Town. But lower the rate, that's not. Yeah, you can't that, lower that, that. That doesn't have any effect on it. It's not. And that's Our tax rate is just based on the valuation that the county does. Right? Yeah, that's right. What, so. um, Janet, where are we at this year? How much money are we going to take out of the coffers this year to, to balance the like We're not even breaking even so far. Okay, but how much is that going to be? At least 200 or some thousand. Because I've run the revenues and expenses last year, and we're over on expenses compared to revenues. Because you're talking about fund balance, right? Two hundred thousand dollars in the fund balance. We had appropriated last year what? Two hundred thousand. So we're we're pretty well we're on the mark with what we. Well, have we're not. We're over. We're at like three hundred thousand in the hole. So we're. It's really hard to tell at this point because you've got to get all your revenues in. But right now, expenses are exceeding revenues in the general fund. And the water fund's exceeding. But see, we spent that two hundred thousand for that easement. That wasn't budgeted. And then um, the bar fund, we knew we was going to decrease there because that lease payment, so we're just getting 500000 in taxes with that budget to get the lease payments out is, you 
you know, six hundred some thousand. So that's good. That's going to decrease. I know for sure. Well, that's that's going to be Yeah, but that's, yeah, but that's part of the fund. I know, but that's part of the fund balance. Yes, that that's total. That's part of. And then you've got to take out your power bill. So probably we might have three to four hundred thousand. And I don't really hope we don't decrease. So that's the reason we need. We we can't. We, we've got to keep it. We've, we've got to not say. Well, going to give us a percentage. I mean, the fire department money has been really kicking our percentage up for our fund balance. Which well, what really it is, it decreased last year. Yeah. We increased between the general fund and the fire department seventy thousand. Yeah. But what happened is the fire fund, which is lease payment, which you know everybody right. agreed to buy those yeah. trucks. I'm not right. saying either there. Yeah. We're getting five hundred thousand in taxes in the fire fund. Right. But then we're taking almost two hundred thousand down each year. Yes. So you're you're saying Janet, right now it looks like we're, we're going to spend out of the fund balance, or we're going to maybe break even. So, but you're what you're saying though is once everything is said and done, this, this year's budget, we're going to have two hundred or two hundred fifty thousand dollars left in the fund balance. Probably, maybe it's about so four hundred. You're talking about appropriating one hundred and eighty for this mm -hmm. year's budget. So we're using it all. That's right. right. Well, yeah, we're really down on fund balance. We really are. And see what's happening in the fire department. Like you say, it's all grouped together, but you got to take that cap. And we've got to keep at least a hundred thousand back for that eight percent. Well, I'm all for tax increase. I, I looked at the all the to be proud of that we have the lowest tax base. <coughs> when when I things at, are needed. Now, whether we want to go to two percent, but I was for one percent. Let me. I'm let me to listen to everybody. Let me ask, uh, what would be the downside of a two two cent increase? Well, Where's the downside? Nobody likes the tax increase. Yeah, yeah. okay. okay. Let's set that aside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking <laughs> now at the, next year, right. at, at, the Do it now instead of at the public perception rather than what does the town need to do? Right, that's what they elected us for. Yeah, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm willing to take the blame for it, let me tell you, because... Uh, I really, I really feel strongly that the town has got to survive. And if I were, if if it were, if we were asking for five or ten cents, but the two cents is only going to give us a cushion, really. This this is a budget where, when it was looked through, it's not a typical budget where you look through and look at ways to save. Therefore, some of the things that were asked for didn't get funded. This year, this is a budget that things didn't get funded because there's no money. There's no money. That's right. Well, think about that. Well, I, I agree with you, Bob. I think that might be. But the best possible thing is when we get in some more revenue from the state, we may break even. If we do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we won't be taking that 200 out. out. We've basically already and I hope that happens because last year we increased 70,000. So hopefully yeah. we'll increase enough. How long has the state owed us this money? Well, I mean, we asked for it. I mean, they've owed it since we spent it. But I mean, if we've got a new governor in there. They've changed all those. Yeah. Real Center no longer exists like mm -hmm. it did. All these grants that we got, we've had these grants what, four or five years. Yeah. Now it's the commerce, something commerce. Department of Commerce. And I mean, you know, there's no way we can control well, that. We're also facing the, the state wanting towns to take over some road maintenance. And how in the world we do that, I don't know. But that will have the fund balance. This is out of the water fund. Yeah. That one. That so million dollars would be in retained earnings. Or civil. It's still money. <laughs> well, I know, but I'm saying you can't really yeah. use it for right. taxes. Well, that's something I, I, we can't take a vote on, but I did want to throw it out to see, and, and, and I think there is some there is some feeling both ways, and, and we need to, to weigh them. Uh, yeah. One other thing at the uh, June meeting, uh, I'd like to call for a, a, a quick closed session if, if, if there's no objection to it. So we'll put that on the agenda. What else do we have we want to talk about? As long as we don't vote, I think we can talk about it. I'm sure we know. Let's, yeah. let's talk about the, the tax, the taxes, tax rate okay. stuff. Still on that. I'm still kind of hung up on that. You know, if the county goes from 27 to 35, we're going to go from 26 to 31 or 32. So next year, we can't reduce our taxes. We've got to increase them. The millage. Yeah, the millage rate. So we're looking at a, a four or five cent 
just to be exactly where we was this year. Well, if we, if, if it's anybody's idea that we need to do a two cent, and the, the board agrees, we don't need to spend it. We don't need to budget it. That's right. It, we, That's it right. Needs to be, needs to be put in there and left there. And left there mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if we start saying, oh, we got $60,000, let's find something else to spend it on, we're just backing up. But you're right. Um, you're absolutely. But we don't have that 60000 now. That's right. If we need it. That's right. Yeah. So we, we, it, well, we can't. We can't start adding. Mm -hmm. uh, you can you can anticipate our fund balance is going to drop. For the next couple of years, it's going to drop two hundred thousand a year just on the fire department lease because that money that was in the fund balance for the fire department that comes from the county fire tax is already earmarked. So that well, that fund balance is going to be down, and that, do that affects that our overall percentage of the town. That yeah. has to be broken down. We don't ever need to say, what's the fund balance? And somebody says $400,000, but then fails to say that $300,000 of that belongs to the fire. Oh, no, I was trying to find out. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. yeah. So we really have to take it. a look at that because our fund balance is, is you know, it's always looked like it's we've had a great percentage ratio, right. but when you at that time, that was seven, seven, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand. Yeah, it was actually your part of the fire department. It's not part of the town. Then you need go to take out that pound bill fund. Yes, so there's a lot that you have to take out. If they need something on that, that, that needs to come through the, the tax rate that the fire department has. Uh, we don't need to get that mixed up with, with our stuff. It's too complicated as it goes down. Fairlight, um, could you explain something to me? Okay. Um, Let's say the revaluation comes in and the town of Franklin's values hold close to where they are now. Yes. Well, and the, we know the county tax rate will have to go up because they're looking at the whole county. Right. But why would our tax rate have to go up if the valuations? Have well, we're we're just we're just saying that where it would affect uh, maybe the, tax the hundred percent increase the county we may not see, but sixty percent. So it's still we're still going to have to balance our budget based on that. I mean, right. so the valuation is going to drop in the city, just not not. That's we don't right. feel as much as what the county is, right. which but would still did. require a increase in tax just to balance it. Right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. No, that's, so we, I mean, we we, we don't have, have the right position. position. We'll yeah. Be yeah. Well, we, we actually the dollar may not go up. You know, yeah. to, to the property owners. You know, it may may stay the same, but the rate. Would be changing because of more property values if it went down. Yeah, we're not. I mean, it still would be. It could affect the town residents. Could be affected a lot more than the county residents would be, and then the town residents are probably going to have to pay a higher percentage of taxes right. than that. what On the county does now. Yeah, the county, 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 county level, like so they're really right. going to be taxed yeah. next year. Mm -hmm. so, so it could it could have a, a real negative effect on. Well, they had went to a four-year revaluation, and then when the yeah. and everything Change started to come, got so bad they went back to the eight. Mm -hmm. See, we should have had this revaluation several yeah. years, years ago, ago. Right. but then at that <laughs> time it would really have decreased. I thought so. They could have postponed it to next year. Well, I guess for for sake of argument, um, it wouldn't take much summer just to. Leave this one it is at one cent and do another one at two cents, would it? I mean, because really the only thing you're going to be adjusting is what money we're getting in through taxes, and that'll only be a, about a sixty-four thousand dollar increase in this thing. So yeah. it, it just removes it just removes the amount of money we'd have to remove from the fund balance. It's all it's all it's all going to affect. So it's your ad valorem tax. Well. Under the, the difference column there, the uh, what you put the difference you pay, all you have to do is multiply it by two. And if I, I feel like that it'll be no more difficult to persuade the public to go with two cents than it will be one. Not that much money. When you're not talking about that much, but what would it mean to the town? That's what I think the bottom line is. I worry that we've only got a contingency of thirty thousand. That's just to say you didn't amend the budget. I know. I but you don't want to amend the budget. You don't really no, want to amend the budget. What if something happens? What if something happens? Well, then we'll have to take it out of the budget. We'll take it out of the fund. Yeah. 
but that contingency is for like little small things. Yes, I know. You're actually supposed to keep under your expenses. Well, what bothers me so much are things that we used to depend on the state to partner with us on are gone. <laughs> we all are gone. About that. And, uh, it's, it's scary to me. Region A is, is feeling it. Uh, we're all feeling it. Uh, we have to charge us now because of all the cutbacks and the private partnerships that we used to see are disappearing. We need to work on private partnerships in the town. We really do. We really do. Well, anyhow, <laughs> threw threw some ideas out there, and I I don't know. Uh, there may be more questions, but I want to mention one thing. Chad, welcome. We're glad you're here, and it's such an exciting Saturday morning. This is why we get the big bucks. That's right, and I want to I want to echo what Joyce said. Oh my! Wait a minute. I'm going to wait, wait, just a minute. Wait, I'm going to be nice to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been on the board for ten years, and I have come to some of these budget workshops, and they say, "There it is," and we went home. And this, yeah, this Janet great. and Summer, this was great. I, I really think so. Uh, who's got something else? I you got some biscuits. Oh, thing. Summer does. Yeah. If you don't mind, just kind of recap before we need to go on sure. our coming weeks. Um, so let me just make sure I've understood what so Jan and I can direct to have you guys sure. a revised budget. The changes that you would like to to make, um, one that I noted was the lease purchase for the police. You'd like me to pursue that to see if that is a possibility with the 36000 that we currently have budgeted. Okay. Um, the K-9, we're going to leave that in there. Let, let us do a little bit more research to see what we can do if we want to start that foundation and what we could run into. Um, the full-time public works employee, um, I would move that from the capital outlay distribution lines with the hopes of starting to take in those smaller projects, doing them in-house, and making that part-time salary into a full-time salary. And then the tax increase, would you like us to figure that at the 2%? Or excuse me, at uh, 2 cents. Yeah. <laughs> Let me retract. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, so what we'll do... Can I clarify? This full-time employee is going to be in water, right? Yes. And then you want me to figure out fringes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because if it's going to be, it's going to be more than twenty something thousand. Okay. Yeah, it's water. It's what's in. Okay. Under J five. Five. Yeah. Five water. Yeah, the backhoe operators is all water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So what we will do in the meantime, um, it's, it's to the will of the board, if you're comfortable with what we've done here today, um, moving forward, we could just, we'll make the changes. This will be in your proposed agenda packet for your June 2nd meeting, because we will have our public hearing. That is opportunity for the public to come, sign up. They'll have a chance to look at the corrected budget that we are now proposing. The meeting's at 7.05, or if you guys are not comfortable pursuing that avenue, if you want to set up another work session, I'm open to do that. You just direct me what you'd like to do. I feel more comfortable than I ever have, including the times that I spent reporting. <laughs> <laughs> and now the water fund, we're not increasing that total. We want to take it out of that one. Right. 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 Is that correct? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, I even know what you mean when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we've got a good good budget plan, and we've also got some ideas on things we need to look at next yeah. year as possibilities of reducing some of our costs. Mm -hmm. All right, so anything else? Real quick, like, we can't vote on anything, but has anybody got anything they want to throw out right now? Anything about the town? Well, what's wrong with this? <laughs> it's Saturday morning, and we got so well, the rain guns. <laughs> Is it going to rain? Yeah, it's supposed to rain by, by tonight again. I'm going to get you to your tea party. party. Yeah. You want to come help make tea sandwiches? Oh, uh, what about the pickleball? Okay, my biggest thing, mm -hmm. Bob, right at this point, and I did not open. I didn't get home from five o'clock yesterday oh, okay. morning until nine thirty last night. Right. I just kept going. Wow. So I looked. So I didn't even. I didn't think I would even understand it if I clicked on it and read okay. what it was. Okay. But, but about the tennis court, I think we need to leave Memorial Park alone until the, the job court is done, whatever they're going to do, whether they're going to end up being big trucks in there. We don't know for sure what's going to be coming in there. So if we start fixing up 
a tennis court and then they end up messing it up. Yeah, we want to give them full access to, to me, everything they need to fix that situation. And then after that, yeah, let's go with whatever's going to get the most use out of Memorial Park. And I like Patty's idea of doing, sitting down and doing some kind of planning for what, where we want that park to go. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, some of you had some uh, Yes, I was going to let, let you both know. I have, um, we're going to look at at least, if nothing else, that's no direct expense of pressure washing. I've, I've spoke with Warren Cave and the fire department's willing to come. They were going yesterday, but despite the little storm that come through, they did not pressure wash. Um, they're going to pressure wash the courts, and then uh, Joy, we have a meeting with Mr. West on Thursday to see if they can use the court as is. But we will clean it up in the house. I think that's great. And the fire department has always come out there and, oh, yeah. and used the pressure wash the whole building and everything because somebody's taking mud and put it on the side of the buildings know, and everything. So you always got the kooks. So, but. And okay. I see that nice <laughs> Anything else from anybody? Thank you. Well, thank, thank you all you. for allowing me the opportunity. It thank was just great. Yeah. All right, everybody have a good weekend. What's left of it? Thanks, it was, it was, it was, it was a, it was a, I'm going to get babysitting. <laughs> I just wanted to tell y'all how much I enjoyed running your Saturday morning. Thank you, Bob. All in favor of adjourning? Our morning meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank y'all. Joyce. <laughs> oh, God.